Thanks for joining me today. This is the Anonymous Author Podcast, and I'm your host, Anonymous the Author. The Author. The Author. Spit flows, rip shows, and monster. Living this life how we all are. So we slick talk, pain and torture. The Author. Thanks for joining me on the first official episode of this podcast. Uh, today, we're going to be touched on a few topics. Uh, the theme is going to be Langston Hughes and the Harlem Renaissance, and we will touch on that a little bit later. I'll be giving you guys an introduction on who I am um, and a kind of theme of the podcast and uh, some things to look forward to. So stay tuned. The author. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun, or fester like a sore, and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat, or crust over and sugar over, like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load, or does it simply explode? That is Harlem by Langston Hughes, one of my favorite poets, actually. I was going to say during that period, but that poem just sums up the kind of thing that I love to hear. It doesn't give you any kind of closure. It just furthers the conversation. And I love it. Shout out to Langston Hughes and his many poems. But for some reason, this Harlem just always stood out to me. I first heard it in the, I believe it was... I want to say maybe the seventh grade was the first time I ever heard of Langston Hughes and I first heard this poem. I do think it's one of his more popular poems and I, it just, it's not a simple little poem where you can say, oh, well, this is the concept and this is what it means. The name of the, pro, the, name of the poem is Harlem and he just goes to, to talk about what is a dream deferred. Personally, I think that this is a, a conversation about Harlem. Not just Harlem, but the Harlem Renaissance. And, and during that period, the, the, the innovation of the disenfranchised, because Harlem during this time period was um, majority, majority African-American owned. Uh, majority African-American pe- people were living there, and they created their own economy, and they created their own lifestyle, and they went through a whole rebirth, a whole renaissance. This is exactly why it was called a Harlem Renaissance. There were black-owned businesses. There were a it was just a booming time to to be an African American entrepreneur and to to live in these vibing and beautiful communities. And I think that this poem is saying that what happens to a dream deferred? You know, the history of African Americans are that we, you know, we were slaves and you know we couldn't pursue our dreams. So he, I think this poem is saying what happens when you lose your dreams? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun? And he just goes on to break it down. But and then at the last line he says, or does it explode? I think he's saying that regardless of of the the difficulties and the challenges that when you when you f- see that difficulty or that challenge and and you you fight for it and you per- and you you persevere through it your dreams eventually they come true they explode you might defer that dream you might push it off but eventually the 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 power of it comes to light and it explodes so I think that I think that if that makes any sense to anyone out there, I think that's what he was talking about in this poem titled Harlem. Also, uh, the book A Raisin in the Sun, uh, I believe by Maya Angelou. Oh, uh, that's y'all are gonna kill me. I know y'all are gonna kill me. I believe it's by Maya Angelou. Oh, or Alice Walker. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> y'all gonna have to give me right on that one. Y'all gonna have to give me right on that one. But uh definitely I was not the only one that was um impact about this poem it just it just leaves you with a question mark it doesn't solve any problems it just continues the conversation it just adds to it and on some level i just think that is so poignant <laughs> i think that's so deep yeah <laughs> So the theme of today's podcast is going to be Langston Hughes and the Harlem Renaissance. I do think that this is appropriate because it was the type of reason that I'm starting this podcast is because I want my own personal rebirth. 
you know, I've been creating music uh, for a long time now. Um, uh, maybe I should start with an introduction. <laughs> uh, like I said, uh, when I started the podcast, my name is Anonymous, the author. I'm a hip-hop musician here local to Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, that's right here in the Midwest. We're in the southern part, uh, right by, excuse me, uh, right by Kentucky. A little bit of North and South flavor. Um, we are uh, somewhat of a budding scene here. Um, from what I hear and understand, we saw I had a movie or two shot in downtown, which I thought was really cool. Um, but yeah, I'm, just, I'm a hip hop musician here. I do a lot of writing. I do a lot of. I'll do a little bit of everything here around the city. Uh, act a little bit, do some music, uh, shoot some videos. I just like to like to be involved. And um, I'm starting this podcast because um, I've always. I've always had an interest in uh, poetry and writing, so I figure if this, if anyone's listening out there who themselves is a poet or has been looking for some some books or some some kind of motivation or really just looking for a life change, I really wanted to create a podcast that you know we could uh, that could be kind of like a conversation between me and everybody out there. That hopefully I can motivate some got some people to start writing. Uh, some of you uh, fans out there can start writing. Hopefully you're fans of the show. Uh, uh, can be some uh, fans and start help you guys to start writing or um, you know any, anything that I can really do to to affect somebody's life in the positive. I feel like that's always needed and that's always warranted. I'm sure there are other podcasts out there that do something like this, but uh, I haven't heard of them local to my city, so I figure why not? You know. The uh, the closest is uh, always the most powerful and the most impact. So, as I said, uh, this podcast is the Anonymous Author Podcast. Uh, I do feel like every episode we're going to have some kind of theme, and I'm going to read you either a short poem uh, by an author or a writer or a quote or some kind of scene. You know, we're going to have different kind of creators and different kind of themed episodes. Uh, I'm hoping in the future we can get some interviews with some creators. Uh, hopefully, uh, they can share with how they go through their processes, and hopefully that can pass on to you you guys and uh you can uh use it in your own personal life or maybe even just enjoy the content <laughs> i will be having some of my own personal music on here uh music by boltnick media uh this this podcast is sponsored by boltnick media uh that is the company that i am currently signed to and uh if you are interested in sponsoring or hosting any kind of podcast, uh, please email boltneckmedia at outlook.com, B-O-L-T-N-E-C-K-M-E-D-I-A at outlook.com. Uh, reach out to them, and I'm sure they will set something up, and I look forward to partnering with anybody who's interested. Flowing in my jeans, got the game sold in hand, sold versus but not sold out for going in. So nothing ever really changes, cash is clay, how it So once again, uh, this we will be having some themed uh, some themed episodes uh but mainly this is gonna be kind of kind of loose and free i i said all that to act like i have a whole structure i have a whole concept i have a whole plan but i really don't <laughs> uh we're gonna see how much uh we can stay on the rails but this might just devolve into me screaming into the microphone shaking my fist in the air so <laughs> we'll just try to stay uh, the most positive that we can so on the topic of langston hughes and the harlem renaissance i think that uh during this important part of our life and during this time during these er this era i do think that free speech is a very important part of this american way of life that we have <clears throat> i know this is the first episode and we're getting deep already y'all i know i know but i do think that free speech is more important than no, I, I'm going to say it like this. I do think that free speech is important. I'm not going to say it's more important than anything. It's, it's just very important. I I'm, I would say that I lean left, but, I mean, I do believe in in the Second Amendment right. I mean, I'm, I'm here in America, you know what I'm saying? I'm here in the Midwest, and, you know, let's just say I— I've shot a couple guns before. <laughs> I, I don't own any legally. Let's just say that like that. And that's just how we get down here in the Midwest. It's not. It's nothing vindictive, nothing evil, nothing wrong with owning a gun. It's all about how how you choose to use it. If you use it for hunting, I mean, hey, I, nothing wrong with that. I support you. But free speech to me is on that same level. Like it's just something that we have to have. If you're offended by what somebody says, then you are totally entitled to retaliate against that person. In my eyes. Now you're gonna have to deal with <laughs> you're gonna have to deal with what comes out of that. But if you feel like that they upset you to the point that you gotta put your hands on them, then put your hands on them, man. But to me, words should never let you 
words should never push you over the limit to where you're like, okay, I got to react physically and violently. They're just words. Sticks and stones. Shout out Dave Chappelle and that special, Sticks and Stones. I don't know if the people critiquing it understood Sticks and Stones and they break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Like, he was intentionally doing that stuff to be offensive, and they just bit on it. And uh, I think it's kind of cool that he did it in a way that even though people were mad, he's so big that, you know, he's not even so big. It's just that he's independent, and he got his money and then did the special. So it's like, you really can't, you know, he got his money, but <laughs> he out of there. If he chooses to do another special, he does. But if not, you know, he made his money already. So I think that was a very smart choice. Uh, I think that the people that are stuck with, like, network and TV shows have to watch what they say. Um, like, not not every TV show, because you do have, you know, one-offs where, uh, like, some like a phase on love will say whatever he want to say regardless of what's going on. And, uh, you know, he's still getting movie deals because that's who he is. But, like, people who come up in that light, like, who are always been stars, who've never been known as having their own free opinion, I think they'll always be stuck in having to say what the uh, what their bosses tell them to say. And, I mean, hey, if, if, if you feel like chasing the bag is... is is worth it, then you do it. But I mean, I'm going to speak my mind and I'm going to speak my piece. And I feel like free speech is very important to this American lifestyle, to this American way of life. And it's like, no matter what happens, we Americans, we have to stick up for the things that are very basic in this country. Now, you can't use your words to incite violence against somebody. I mean, that's just basic. You can't create a march to say, hey, we're going to kill. You know, you can't create a, a Nazi party. You know what I mean? <laughs> you can't do that. But if you can't give your own opinion about something, I mean, what is the, what's the point? We all don't have to agree. I might not agree with what you have to say, but I mean, I'll defend to the death your right to say it. I mean, that's a basic. You know what I mean? So I do think that in this day and age, free speech is always appreciated. I feel like art, art is art. If you choose to, if you choose to create something, then that even that should, that is even more that you should have the right to do that. I know that sounds ridiculous, but be, you should not have any shackles on you when you're creating something, and then you let the public judge it. I mean, that's the thing. You can't say. Hey, I want my free speech. Okay, say whatever you want to say. And then people are like, oh, man, you said, hey, I got my free speech. It's like, yeah, but we can still react. And that's why I think so many people get it messed up is that, like, I consider myself on the left. But where the left has it wrong is that people can say what they want to say. Like, it's been this cancel culture where it's like these social justice warriors, like, hey, you can't say that, or or we'll cancel you, or we'll get you out of here. It's like, I mean, that's fine. You're the consumer, so if you feel like you don't like them, you could take away. But when you start petitioning these companies and saying, hey, he's racist and all this, it's like, you don't have to enjoy it, but can't, you know, can't other people enjoy it? And then on the right, you have, they say that you— the government should be able to interfere with like Twitter and Facebook and say, hey, you can't take these people off of here because they are exercising their free right to speech. It's like, yeah, but these are private companies. You know what I mean? You know, and I, I've heard the argument, well, well, they've just gotten so big that they're, uh, it's, a, it's a public, you know, it's like a public domain. You know, everyone uses it, so the government has to regulate it. <sighs> are we really going to give the government more power, fam? I mean, come on, fam. Like I said, I consider myself left, but I don't even fuck with the government, bro. I don't even, I don't even trust the government, bro. I can't do it. I do not mess with the government on any level. So if to have them try to interfere and re regulate these social medias, I'm like, just create your own social media. Like, create your own following, your own your basic core so that if you do get kicked off of these places, you can go somewhere else and make your money because really the only complaint is that you're forcing them to lose money. And I don't want to say I come from the bottom, but I come from some shitty, terrible situations and I know what it's like to be at the bottom. And if you're making 20000 a year off your residual dividend, you're not living that bad, fam. I come from the Midwest. We get by on thirty k a year. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a good year for some people out here. Not saying they survive well, but I can't really feel bad for these people that's making two, three hundred million, you know, two, three hundred million over years and years, and then they all of a sudden stop and it's like, oh, feel bad for them. It's like, ah. 
I don't know about that, bro. You sounding real elitist, bro. <laughs> That's what you sounding like. You sounding real elitist, bro. You sound like you crying in the back of your McLaren, my nigga. Like you sound like you, you just, you know what I'm saying? You got on your Gucci boots. You wiping away tears with the Louis Vuitton rag. Like I, I don't know if I feel that bad for you, bro. But I do feel like people should have free speech. I do feel like you can say what you want to say. If you sound an ass, let the people judge you and you be an ass. And then people can stop messing with you. And then that's the end of it. And then you realize that you were wrong. Or maybe you section off a, 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 a core following that really likes you. But I feel like idiots should be allowed to, to reveal their idiocracy. <laughs> I do. So, yeah. Once again, following the theme of the Harlem Renaissance, uh, <laughs> all of that just to say that art should not be shackled. If you're going through a rebirth, if you're going through a creation, if you're going through, if you're going to express yourself like a Langston Hughes uh, and, and, and use your thoughts and mind to create something, you shouldn't be shackled by any kind of PC or I need to, to lean or walk this way. I feel like you should be able to express yourself to the fullest of your ability as long as you're not inciting violence. <laughs> I must be, I must be everything I can dream, every scene I can see, everything I believe. I must be, I must be the light in the dark, the life to the art, the swipe to the charm. I must be, I must be all that I can, be a better man, hope lives through me. All right, and lastly today, you got to talk about my hometown team, y'all. My Cincinnati Bengals. I know, I know, I know. What is going on? They thought that getting rid of Marvin Lewis was going to be the answer. That's what they thought. They thought Marvin Lewis was the problem. And on some level, maybe he was the problem. Because to me, he picked Andy Dalton. Now, Andy Dalton is a good person. Andy Dalton is a great individual. He does great work around the city. Uh, he has been to a bunch of uh, charity events for his uh, foundation. Him and his beautiful wife had some people that met them in person and said they had nothing but great glowing reviews. Andy Dalton is a gentleman. But he's not a good quarterback. Not for the Bengals. Right now, as the Bengals sit below, not atop, as the Bengals sit below, the conference, last place, hadn't had a win yet, 0-5. Andy Dalton is currently ranked 29th in QBR. I believe it's seven touchdowns, four interceptions. And you know what? I can't even blame him because he was set last week. He was destroyed. Most sacks a quarterback has had this season. So I'm not even going to blame him because the offense as a whole has always been the issue. Even when Marvin Lewis was the coach, the defense was so solid. And I think that's because Marvin Lewis was, a, you know, he, he leaned on the defense. Matter of fact, we had a, defense, a defensive coordinator snatched up. That, uh, I don't know if he's still coached for the Minnesota Vikings. Y'all, y'all let me know out there, and I'm in, uh, the Vikings coach, uh, who he is. Um, but yeah, I think they snatched him up. So the defense has always been real solid. It's always been real focused and real driven, but the offense has always gone through A.J. Green. When A.J. Green has a good game, most of the time the Bengals look pretty good. But the reason we haven't won the playoffs is because the offense was run through A.J. Green. <laughs> I mean, when you're a one-ride receiver, they can just hone in on you and you get shut down. And that most of the time, that was, that's what happens. I mean, A.J. Green is one of the better wide receivers in the, in the NFL today, and he was injured at the start of the season. And I was like, well, we'll be getting a top lottery pick. Cincinnati will be definitely getting a top lottery pick because, like I said, he is the offense right now. He's a, he can take the defense, you know, he can take, take away the secondary. So they can't rush the quarterback every time because he's a threat regardless. You throw it up, he, six four six five, long and athletic, he will go up there and get in. You at least... Once a game, you saw one of them type catches because, you know, Andy Dalton was slinging them things. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, Andy Dalton is good for close and mid-range, but when you start, he doesn't have an arm like a Cam does or like a Big Ben did, does, did? Did, does. <laughs> um, but he is, he's a good leader and I, he's a good football player. But uh, watch, you know, 
Same way they did Marvin Lewis, I'm going to say about Andy Dalton, it's time for him to go too. But since Zach Taylor is a new coach, usually in these situations you see new coaches, if they're there for a, you know any length of time, they usually try to bring in their own guys, and that involves their own, court, their own quarterback that they see. And, I mean, Andy Dalton made his money. So I wish him nothing but the best. But I think it's time to, to draft a, a good quarterback and to let Andy Dalton start grooming him, hopefully, and start moving his way out or, you know, working your way in a trade. But I think it's if we're going to get rid of Marvin Lewis, we got to get rid of, the you know, the quarterback that he drafted. Keep A.J. Green, though, you know. <laughs> Keep Green. But uh, I just think we got to get somebody with an arm to really slang that thing to Green and then we can get that running game going uh, with the with the backs that we have. So. I really hope the Bengals can uh, next year. I hope the Bengals can do something. Uh, this year is probably going to be a learning year. Like I said, we own five uh, in last place. Not to say that the, the conference is strong. I think the Ravens are leading our division two and three. So it's not like they just we just killing it over here uh, in the north. But uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. This all All right, guys, we touched on a lot of subjects today, uh, ranging from my free speech to my bangles to a little introduction on me. Um, I do appreciate you guys. Um, I do thank you guys for everything, um, for listening. Uh, please follow me at Anonymous Rap Guy on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, like I said, at Anonymous Rap Guy. Uh, tweet at me. Let me know if you enjoyed the show. Um, and this, And I have a new announcement. Uh, since doing this podcast, like I said, this this is a way for me to relate to my to relate to my creators and to my other um, people out there that like to express themselves. And I think this podcast will be as much for people as it is for me, and for me to f- find a a way to be expressive and creative. And I'm making an announcement that I am starting to work on a new project. I already got my beats. Me and my producer, uh, Foba Tour, the mastermind, you know, uh, me and him are collaborating again for our new project. We don't have a name just yet, but uh, we do have the beats picked out. We do have a concept, and uh, we are going to get in the studio in the coming weeks uh, to knock something out. Uh, the project hopefully will be released in January 2019. That is three months away. Uh, it's going to be a way to bring in the new year, bring in, I'm sorry, I said January 2019. January 2020, see, I'm stuck in 2019. Uh, it's just a way to bring in a new year. So uh, look out for it. Uh, we will be having some upcoming announcements, some upcoming uh, releases. So follow us, uh, me at Anonymous Rap Guy. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook. Just search the Midnight Suns. Uh, Facebook.com slash Anonymous 513 is my link. And uh, I'm sure that we'll have some fun, guys. Uh, this is Anonymous, the author, signing out. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Peace. The author. The author. Spit